Hey guys, Lightning Wolf, your favorite source of Waffleized Entertainment. Yes, I know you're all going, oh, it's a new season. Actually, there's probably no one doing that yet. Because I barely have anybody watching my channel, but that's okay. Anybody that watches this sees this, guys, it is a great game. It's one of my favorite games. And it's going to be a new series. I have, um,. 15 minute interactive story has yeah 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 I have three I've played through one which is why I have the interactive story but I don't have one anymore I'm not gonna go out and buy it and beat it I will play this game again um, but considering four is they're talking about four dropping next year considering that may take me that long to do it might as well do this right um But yeah, this is literally my favorite game. It is the game that I love the most. When we do three, we will do multiplayer matches. Maybe I'll have a bigger channel following by then, and y'all can help me out with the multiplayer stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. Love Mass Effect 3, though. God. It's, it's a shitty ending, but the indoctrination theory makes it better. And, yeah. That's just how it goes. So, we start out with a new game. Um, probably just gonna bring in a uh, my old one. I I did an infiltrator. Uh, 27 hours and 59 minutes in that game. I still don't remember whether I beat it or not. A lot of time that goes in this game. More than the day, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but we have the interactive story, which allows me to take uh, choices. I'm trying to remember what drops first, whether it being the opening cutscene or the ability to make the choices. Okay. Um, if it doesn't allow me to do it, I'm just going to not post this recording and I'm going to restart it and do a new complete new character I think it should let me Shepard did everything right more than we could have hoped for Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still, it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. But they're sending him to fight Geth. Geth. We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help, even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard, they'll follow him. He's a hero, a bloody icon. But he's just one man. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose him. And uh, I can't read that. Yada yada yada. Invaded by sun. It, it basically depicts like the first thing with the first Reaper uh, latching into the Citadel and taking it over. Over the SR1. I seriously do hope that it lets me do it. I remember it kicks in after this opening cutscene. FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The terminus system is crawling with them. 
Picking up something on the long range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly. It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Okay, so it is where they are. So. To let you know what I plan on doing throughout the three games. Is, if you don't sleep with anybody in the first one. You can go with, uh. one that's in the bio suit. Shit. Everybody in. Go, go, go. Ah, uh, brain, why must you fail? Tolly. You can go with her and they start talking about kids and stuff like that. If you go with Liara and you go with her through all three games, which is if you had the Shadow Broker DLC for this game, you can still get with her. You start talking about marriage and kids as well in uh, three. And if you save Ashley in the first one, she hates you in this one. But that's uh, just one of those things. And then. You can fix everything. Okay, that's bullshit. That should put out that fire. I want to do that. I gotta look. No, it does not. Physics broken. I like how he can't run out, even in the bio suit. That bio suit is supposed to be one of the strongest ones because he's an N7. Uh, shit. Let's see. And if you go with Miranda with this one, you can save her in the next one. Well, you know what my antivirus is now. Come on, Joker. We have to get out of here. No, I won't abandon the Normandy. I can still save her. The Normandy's lost. Going down with the ship won't change that. Yeah, okay. Help me up. They're coming around with another attack. It's funny because it doesn't cause much explosions anymore because initial damage is done. He's got brittle bone disease, by the way, so his bones are like glass. Now combine that with the best trained soldier ever to live. And one grab of the hand, and it breaks his arm. So. It's the last thing you did before you died. I saved one of my best friends. See, it's funny because they can detect. 
never seen this game. The bad guys can detect their shit. Yeah, okay, so it is active. See, this is different. This isn't how the game usually opens if you don't have that DLC. Like, this happens, but the view of the Normandy up close like that doesn't. He gets spaced and re-entry happens. But because he has one of the best devised suits, well, you'll 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 see. <laughs> this game this game breaks the logic here in a little bit. Mass Effect Two. Now, if the uh, pre-story doesn't happen, then I'm just gonna outright. Okay, there we go. Interactive backstory com. See, this is Mass Effect Genesis. It lets you make the uh, decisions for. Just another routine mission. Why do they always say that before a mission? Of course it's routine. You haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way. The choices you make, the paths you choose, that turn the routine into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission. Answering a distress call. Look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Olenko. A good kid, loyal, by the book, with a talent for biotics. We came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. A soldier to the core. Tough, disciplined, ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. The ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive. Scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact. A beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up, and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Chief Williams made the mistake of getting too close. It hit her with some type of energy. I grabbed her and threw her out of the way. That's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. Could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Adina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat. As was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian Spectre named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime. And there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Adina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite specters could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof. Which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel Security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren, and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest-looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Saren. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tal. As I noticed, a uh, the guy that does Shepard's voice is Southern. Chief procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime, and that the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. He pronounced Tally it went much like further. Saren was trying the to end. find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relay to dark space, leaving no trace they'd ever been. 
That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and I made some sense out of my visions. But not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat, but they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I would need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara. A Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, daughter of Venezia, Saren's top lieutenant. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is now, intelligent. And I will warn you, I don't like Ashley. Liara was able to help me. So I'm not gonna some pick her. The beacon had given me. Liara is concrete, but it gave me some clues. Probably my and favorite. Appreciation for the Asari. I the just, I just get too attached. So not at I think all I'm gonna pleasant. go with her. Ashley was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere. Ashley was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara's commander. They are. I told Liara about how I felt. Apparently, she'd felt it too. But we agreed we wouldn't let it get in the way of our mission. Because finding Sarah. Well, you'll see. Ashley turns into a bitch. Thanks for Liara's help. God, it, it takes week. her almost dying and halfway through the third to fix it too. Had taken her to Novarian. Where he'd enslaved a dangerous race of insect like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Venezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni Queen. The Queen's drones were everywhere, and they weren't happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Venezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone. With the information, I tried to reason with Venezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Venezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. Uh, do you want to save the queen? I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with her. With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer, but we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves. Mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base. And all its research. Rex disagreed. Violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy See, it. See, this is Krogan where the breed. first game fucks up. It gets rid of one of the best characters if you don't play it. You want to save him. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people, and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship. It was a Reaper. It spoke to me. Threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split up my team in two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke, and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign. 
the Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control, said he found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence, but he was kidding himself, or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran, leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried. But I wasn't uh, fast even though Ashley turned into a bitch, Caden turns into a dick either way. Caden's boring, Ashley's interesting. Caden was a good man, and a great soldier. But I had to choose, and I chose Ash. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, one of us would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Proteans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. Liara saw through my words. She knew I was hurting after Caden's death. She could sense my doubts. We both knew this mission could be our last. Until that moment, we'd put our feelings aside for the sake of that mission. But why wait? We gave in to each other. And it was perfect. While it lasted. We arrived on Ilos, close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago. And every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died, like every species before them. But a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space, slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space, bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. <laughs> we followed him to the Citadel. Like, uh, Garrus. It was intense. Yeah, Superman died. Heavily he had caught the Council fleets like, by surprise, you. and they were only now regrouping. And with Sovereign as his flagship, there was little hope the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running. And I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Citadel fleets battled Saren's army outside, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have um, to put our human alliance fleet. <sighs> Either way, the council becomes a pain in the ass. Uh, this one pretty much just controls whether Udini, Udina, Udini controls whether the uh, controls the Citadel or not. Choose to save the council because he's an asshole. The council had to be saved. They represented the hearts and minds of the galactic community. Without Help them, the three. fleets would be in disarray. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated, and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet, the battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. But the costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left for me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, um, a lifetime politician. I choose Udina because... It would easily uh, Anderson just hates playing fight. politics, and he tells you that on the multiple choice, occasions. So Anderson, I don't do him to that. Career soldier. No bueno. Tough but fair, but a friend. Though a Anderson tends to be a little bit more. 
I didn't much like Adina, but sometimes you need a pit bull on your side. Someone willing to a little be bit more for the sake of the okay. good. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the council would rebuild itself. The citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned to clean up duty, rooting out any remnants of Saren's army. Just no boy no. I don't know why I say no bueno. I like it. I like to move it, move it. Alright, so this is where the game breaks all forms of light. I Essentially, it's not logic, but it is. Commander Shepard has been recovered. Allow Pretty much, what they do is they completely revive you. You die from re-entry, right? You're dead. But the game revives you, like. For some reason, to me, that doesn't seem like it's plausible, but it, it just very might be, you know. We don't have the technology yet in our lifetime to kill somebody, right? Through throwing them through re-entry and then completely and utterly fixing them. Now here's the thing, the the weapon that becomes the most useful in the end is the sniper rifle. It's probably one of the best weapons. Uh, sure. Uh, except in port of phase. Yeah, I'm gonna customize it. Uh, cycle. This is the only thing that I don't like. Like, it doesn't give you choices as much as I would like it. Where is it? There we go. Facial structure. Thin face. There we go. I like that. Uh, head structure. Facial structure. Yeah, you could be like pale or black. I'm about there. It looks Asian. So it's pretty much pale, uh, eh, average, me, uh, Mexican, black, Hispanic, sorry. I'm Native American. Native Americans are a little bit lighter. My neck is not that thick. It's about right. Mm, they kind of pop out a little. Further. By the way, I'm not bald. Uh, about that, yeah. Alright, front center. 